What's going on guys? So what we're going to talk about in this video is something that I feel like has kind of been forgotten about in all of the YouTube black hole of videos regarding Pokemon. It doesn't seem like anybody's talking about some of the fundamentals of stuff that matters in this hobby. Um, and so I'm pleased to be that channel, uh, be that person that gets to just think of these things and talk about them as I go, as they're popping up in my head. Um, bear with me, my brain might be scattered, my thoughts might be scattered. I just got off a long shift at the bar. Um, we just found out that we're losing someone and that I will be picking up another shift at the bar. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, my family and I operate a bar, Starlight on 22nd here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and that is kind of my main gig. Um, but honestly, more and more, I'm doing YouTube videos. I'm loving doing these videos. This is kind of becoming my life's passion um, and just chopping it up with people on a live stream. I know I'm gonna be working back to back this weekend. I would love to do a live stream. I don't know if maybe we'll do one tomorrow, midday before I go to my late night shift. Um, but I know most people are working. Anyways, let's just get straight into it, into this topic. Um, what makes a good Pokemon collection? I mean, what is a good Pokemon collection? I mean, how do we define something like this that's, that's kind of such a vague thing to say and state um, that you have a good collection? So I think that, you know, obviously it's like me making a cocktail at the bar. It's whatever the person's preference is, right? So I've got a couple things that I'm going to touch on that I like, um, and then I'm going to touch up on that um, in the rest of the video. So starting off, when I got into Pokemon again, um, the first thing I did was I kind of looked for the cheapest hollows that I could find. Um, by hollow, I mean, this should be basic knowledge, but anybody new to the channel, by hollow, I'm saying a holographic card. Um, so I, I was just looking for the early on sets that I had as a kid and I was looking for those holographic cards for as cheap as I could possibly find them. And I did find some ridiculously good deals. I also found some cards that ended up being kind of bad investments at this point uh, from the perspective that I have today as a kind of um, seasoned collector. Um, so I was going after like $2 hollows, $3 hollows, anything that I could find and get a bargain on, no matter how beat up or worn it was, that was just, I wanted to accumulate as much of those hollow cards. Um, and then I ended up moving into um, theme decks. Now, why did I move into theme decks? And for your reference, this is a theme deck. Now, we've all got different things that we like. Um, before I explain my theme deck addiction, um, you know, there are theme decks. Some people want to go after the chase cards in the newer sets. This is a Pikachu secret rare from Crown Zenith. Um, you know, some people want to go after the consoles. I know I have this one bagged up, but that's just to protect it. In the console market, I've got my SP up here as well. Um, and then some people really like the, the Game Boy games, the old artwork from the games. Uh, and we're going to get into all of that in a little bit but I'm just gonna take you guys through a journey, through my story of kind of how my collection evolved and how it grew um, and what kind of makes it a good collection to me personally. Um, now, I just wanna preface by saying that a good collection is what whatever it is to you. Like if, if you just want a couple of cards, like for instance, and this isn't common knowledge to everybody, but a lot of people that are big into collecting you know what I'm talking about when I'm referencing gold star cards or shining cards. Um, shining cards from Neo Destiny, like the Shining Charizard, for instance. That's a big card. That's a card that a lot of people want. Um, you know, you could be a niche collector and you could go after the shining cards or the gold star cards. Um, and you could go after really high grade cards. You know, I, I met a guy, you know, and you could go after low grade cards as well. There's nothing wrong with that. It's all about your personal preference. Um, I know I went to a card shop recently and there was a guy there with a, a, um, a box full of creased Charizards. That was his thing. It was buying Charizards for a really good value for a really good deal that had creases or imperfections and while that's something that I don't necessarily agree with, it's something that I could definitely appreciate somebody else's collection style. I know somebody else that specifically is going for the Plasma Storm era stuff, 
um, you know, stuff from way back, you know, 10 years ago. They're, they're going for this set specifically because no one seems to be talking about it or collecting it. You know, there are these niches that people go into. Um, I am super ADD. I'm super OCD. I am a com completionist by fault. I have to go after everything. Once I know about something, I can't forget about it. And then I'm, I'm, I, I go after it and I chase it. Um, I know that people have been trying to get me in the console world for a long time, the Nintendo console world, you know, going after consoles like Game Boys and, and Nintendo 64s and old, you know, Pokemon games. But that was something I kind of shrugged off because I was more into collecting the cards at that time. And I've evolved a lot since then. But, you know, that's what I'm talking about in this video. Um, so there are a lot of niches and you can have a niche and having a niche kind of keeps you in your lane. It keeps you from kind of getting out of control. For me, the niche that I had that kept me from kind of going off the deep end, which I've definitely gone off the deep end since then. I have all of this stuff now. Um, the niche that I was in was theme decks. Now, why might you ask, why would you be interested in collecting theme decks? There's only one holo card. There's not that many Pokemon. Half of the deck is energies. Um, and then you get this, you know, you get this box, you know, whatever. The reason that I got into theme decks is because there was organization. Everything was organized nicely in a deck. It, it presented really well. And I have something other than just the cards to look back on a memory, you know, reminiscent of childhood. I never had these. So I really wanted them when I found them. I was like shocked. Why was I shocked? I don't know. Every card game has like starter decks and you know, theme decks that are put together around certain cards with a certain strategy. Um, and I will admit, we did play with all these decks. Me, my wife, um, some of my friends, we all played with these old cards. So it was really fun to get those memories back and go through that process all over again that I didn't quite have as a kid because I just, I wasn't that into Pokemon as a young kid. I had a Japanese binder and that was about it. But getting back into it as an adult, I wanted this stuff that I didn't have. And so for me, I was a big Yu-Gi-Oh fan and I had all the Yu-Gi-Oh starter decks and that just something resonated within me when I saw these decks from Pokemon, these kind of base set older decks. Now, if you go down that road, it is a long journey. There are so many of these decks from different eras to go after. It's never ending almost. Um, I have got to a point where I'd, I'd like to say that I'm 90% complete with all of my theme decks up to like 2007, um, but there's still more to get stuff to go after. I know I lost a bit on one recently that was sealed. Um, it was a Rock Garden Aquapolis theme deck. That comes from this set over here. Uh, but anyways, continuing, I really like these theme decks because they were neat, they were organized, and they were really easy to display. So you could display them like this. So when I first had my collection growing, you know, a couple years back, I just had, you know, on my nightstand, I had a couple of these theme decks like this. And it was so innocent. It was just a couple of theme decks. You know, I didn't put a lot of money into it. It was so innocent, you know, and harmless. I just had a couple of these theme decks we could play occasionally. And that was, that was me revisiting childhood and having these cards and getting to play with them once more. Um, but then it grew. I started wanting these sealed theme decks. And then I started wanting, you know, more limited edition theme decks, theme decks that, you know, you didn't see as often. And it just, it went, I went off the walls and I ended up going after every single display with every single theme deck. I'm still missing several displays. That's something that I don't even look for anymore just because I'm so bogged down by everything else I'm collecting. But, you know, when you're asking what is, what is a good collection, what's a good Pokemon collection, that's really up to the person who's collecting, right? I think so often we have everybody's opinions and they weigh down on us and, and, and everybody's opinion pretty much decides what a good collection is. I think for the most part, the mainstream idea of a good collection is just kind of a box or a briefcase with graded slabs. I think a lot of people think that is the, the pinnacle of having a good collection. And I'm here to tell you that, you know, as much as I do have a lot of graded cards, I think that that's the wrong way to go about it. And honestly, I think that there's, you end up spending way more money going after graded cards than just buying raw cards. The issue here, the issue with that mentality is that um, raw cards these days just are plain or worn. It's getting really, really hard 
20 years later after the, you know, the inception of Pokemon, it's getting very, very difficult to find raw cards that haven't been graded, that have been kept up, that are in good condition. It's so difficult to find these cards these days that honestly, I can't blame people for going after graded cards. Just tonight, I was bidding on an Arcanine from Skyridge, which is a set right here. Um, you know, I bought that same card for $300 raw. And honestly, I feel like it's a nine, but I don't know. And so that's another thing about buying graded cards is that they have a grade for a reason to give you some barometer of value and, and kind of, you know, the, the, the condition of the card. Uh, and that's super helpful. So I understand why people have graded collections, but I just, I hate that the, that, that there's such a premium on high grade cards that it makes it very, very hard to have a graded collection. Um, you know, you can buy high grade cards that just aren't very rare and then great. You have PSA nines, PSA tens, but they're not really, they're not hard cards to find. And so I run into that issue as well. You know, I don't have any PSA tens. I think I only have like two or three PSA nine cards. And that just goes to show that I'm really not stuck on the whole idea of having high grade cards. I am going to buy high grade cards. I'm going to accumulate high grade cards as I move on in the hobby. But honestly, I get the most enjoyment out of buying stuff for the artwork. Like these boxes, I think have a lot of value. The, the booster boxes, these empty booster boxes behind me, just the artwork that's on them. It just, it makes me feel like I'm back in 2001, 2000, 1999. I'm back in that era and I'm in a Pokemon shop. That's what I kind of went after building my collection um, gradually from the theme decks. And, you know, I just want to say that, like, you might collect something that other people don't see is really valuable and you might create new trends. I know that I have created a trend with these theme decks. Theme decks were not on anybody's radar. I'm telling you, I, I'm not the one creating waves in the theme deck world, but I will say that's something that everybody on this channel knows me for. I'm a big theme deck collector. I have a glass display case full, stacked full of sealed theme decks, open theme decks, stuff that's limited, stuff that's hard to find. Um, that's what I have pride in. You know, that's where my collection, I feel like, excels. Um, you know, I have all that artwork and all that merchandise, you know, from all those years ago. Um, that's really special to me, more so than the cards themselves, because I get an idea of like, this is what it would be like if I had all this stuff in a store. And honestly, my backdrop, you know, behind me, this shelving, people all the time on my Mercari ask me if I have a store, like where this is coming from. And no, I don't. This is just a small game room that I do my videos in. And I, I just like, I love doing videos and I love explaining how I go about collecting. Um, and also going, you know, touching up on these topics that kind of just get outdated. You know, we're all talking about Scarlet and Violet or the rarest cards to open or PSA submission returns. And that's all great. But, you know, where do we come together as a community and talk about stuff that we like without having to have a price tag attached to it? Um, and I think for me, the theme deck example is such a great example because, you know, I was picking these up and nobody really cared about them. I was winning them in auctions for dirt cheap. I was getting theme decks for 40 bucks, 50 bucks. And to me, I look at this deck, if I got this for 50 bucks, I look at this open theme deck, you know, the cards are in fantastic shape and I see a $200 deck. That's just what my brain sees. You know, it's everything is valued at what you're willing to pay for it. And I know that in a couple of years, these decks are going to skyrocket in value. You know, I don't want people coming into my space and buying up theme decks and being competitive in auctions with me because that means there's more competition in the space. But at the end of the day, this channel is about being transparent and letting you guys know trends and letting you know what I'm interested in. And that's one of the things that I think is going to blow up is Pokemon theme decks. I don't know how that's going to apply to modern stuff, but that's just, that's my thing. And lately I've noticed that the theme deck prices, like the biddings on theme decks are going up a lot. People are starting to really catch up onto this, catch onto this and buy into it. Um, and granted, if that's not your thing, great. More for me. I love theme decks. I'll be collecting them the rest of my life. There's just something about these boxes, especially let's be clear about this. The older boxes, there's something about the boxiness of them. It's kind of like having an old book. 
there's something just there's something just classy about these boxes i i can't explain it but um i, I absolutely love it one of my favorite things is collecting these shadowless decks a lot of people don't know about this i feel like there's just not a lot talked on it um not a lot of of, of um not a lot of people talking about you know shadowless theme decks specifically um and some of you might be wondering well what is shadowless so let me just explain um so shadowless is basically this is a base set unlimited card it has a shadow right here shadowless means it doesn't have a shadow so this side doesn't have a shadow basically both sides would not have a shadow and i'm not sure if i have anything up here that would be a good example i should have had a shadowless card out here but basically the point i'm trying to make is on the back of this you can actually see a shadowless card so it's perfect you see that card that charmeleon has no shadow borders on the end so some of these theme decks, when I first got into collecting, I found out that some of these theme decks were sealed from the factory and sometimes they would be marketed just as a regular theme deck when in reality it had a shadowless theme deck. So for me, that was like a treasure hunt, you know, you go after these regular theme decks and you might open one up and there's a shadowless deck inside. What that means is your deck now is pretty much twice as valuable. The shadowless cards are getting harder to find and they are next in line behind first edition cards. So I think that shadowless decks are really, really cool. I know I've got like seven or eight shadowless decks. One of my goals after collecting theme decks was to find every single shadowless theme deck and build a collection of those. And now I have them all and I have duplicates of them. I absolutely love that. That's The shadowless decks are like one of my favorite parts because those are like, those are like the first theme decks that were ever made. They never made theme decks with first edition cards. Anyways, um, moving on, a lot of people are going to get into the hobby and they're going to get into these newer cards, right? The artworks are exceptional. Um, you've got so much going on. It's really not, it has nothing reminiscent of old school Pokemon with, you know, other than the yellow borders, which now we are going to lose the yellow borders. I love how if you put the light right on this secret rare Pikachu, his eyes light up red. Um, but nothing, nothing is indicative of the old or reminiscent of the old Pokemon cards other than the yellow borders here. Um, everything has just changed so much um, since Pokemon's inception. And this is what people are going to be going after. They are going to be going after a lot of these newer cards with these really fancy artworks. And um, my only message there is, yes, I do believe that these things are going to go up in value a lot. Um, I think it's safest to go with a sealed collection. Um, I know a lot of people are opening up their products. They can't wait. They don't have enough willpower to say, hey, let's keep this sealed. But at one point, I had such bad luck opening up sealed product that I had to stop opening it up and find something else to talk about. And that's, that's an uncomfortable place to be in when you realize that you've essentially wasted all your money. And I don't want people to do that. I want people to find a collection niche that works for them. And honestly, theme decks kind of saved me. Now, I was collecting these long before I got into uh, modern Pokemon collecting. Um, and whenever I feel like I'm overspending on modern stuff, I kind of go back to my old ways of looking for vintage theme decks because they're always going up in value. And they're always kind of hard to find. And it's very easy if you look them up on eBay, it's very easy to kind of, you know, whittle it down to just a few that are good auctions that you want to bid on. Whereas when you look up these new cards, there's thousands of them out there. It's so hard to even wrap your head around how many there are out there and like what auction to go in and what to choose. There's just so many of them. And, and I will say, you know, for certain artworks, um, it's really good idea right now as these prices are cheap for these cards to pick up a couple copies while they're cheap because in 10, 20 years, these same cards could be a couple hundred dollars. Who knows? I know me personally, um, that Pikachu is from the set Crown Zenith, which is the set we're on currently. Scarlet and Violet will be coming out in just a couple days on the 31st. It will be releasing officially. Everybody's going to be talking about Scarlet and Violet. I will be talking about Scarlet and Violet as well, but I, again, I want to focus on other things that have to do with the hobby that are good talking points that get people engaged, that people want to talk about, that people can learn from. I don't want to just 
talk about the hype products that are out and the stuff that everybody else is going after because honestly that's just going to make me the same as everybody else and that's honestly why i avoid doing opening videos a lot of the times because one i'm going to lose value in that product two i might not get the cards i want three there's that post opening remorse and what i mean by that is you open all this stuff up and then you you feel like a depression almost like you might get some good cards but no matter what you've opened that product up there's no going back from there and so this this part of you kind of feels guilty for opening this stuff up knowing that it could go up in value now if you don't care about value and you're not investing in a pokemon i am investing in a pokemon i care about value i care about the money involved going into this stuff you know i want it to be rational i want it to be financially feasible for me um, and i think a lot of people can relate to that um, now moving forward uh, you could invest in modern but honestly i think that vintage has a lot more going for it this is just my personal opinion um, i feel like this stuff is not going to be around for much longer um, I feel like a lot of the vintage cards are going to dry up. I know these three sets specifically, Expedition, Aquapolis, and Sky Ridge, have gotten very, very difficult to find holographic cards in good grades or in good condition raw. It is getting so difficult. And every time a card from any of those sets that's, that's a chase card comes up for grabs on, on eBay, Mercari, you know, whatever, they go very quickly. Um, that being said, you know, I feel like vintage is a safer market, but at the same time, this modern stuff is really going up in value a lot. So it's, it's what, like, this just goes to the point that there's so much out there and it's up to you to figure out, you know, what makes a collection great? What makes a Pokemon collection great? Um, and I do feel like there's a lot of room for, you know, mistakes along the way. That's okay. You're going to make mistakes. You know, what I mean by that is you're going to buy cards that you think are beautiful, that you think are going to skyrocket in value, and they might not. They might be stagnant. They might even drop in value a little bit. You know, this is the risk with buying into singles. You know, where I think the safest thing if you're going to go with modern stuff is just buy sealed product. From what I've seen and, and, and what I've already, you know, been involved in, all of these sealed modern product that I've bought has pretty much gone up in value. It hasn't gone up in value tremendously, but it's gone up in value to at least let me know that, hey, you didn't make a bad financial choice here. This stuff is gonna go up in value. Um, the key here is just not opening up everything, having some willpower and saying, hey, that's the sealed collection. That's gonna stay that way. I'm not gonna open up. I might open something up you know, occasionally, but I'm trying to build a community here. I'm trying to build, you know, um, I'm trying to build a group of people that understand that money doesn't grow on trees and we can't just be endlessly buying pokemon product and opening it up otherwise we're, we're all gonna go broke so uh, you know that's that's the reality i don't think a lot of people are talking about that i think people will just keep opening products and and maybe that's what people want to see but that's not what my channel is about my channel is about educating people and giving my point of view and my perspective from being in the hobby for the last couple of years um the next thing is like, as you evolve and move forward, you are going to get into other things. So I've got my Game Boy Advance, my SP over here. So lately I've gotten into consoles. That that almost has nothing to do with Pokemon other than the Game Boy games. But you know, it gets boring collecting the same thing over and over and over again, no matter if there's good value to be had there. It's like, it's like, like at one point I went for just Charizards. I was just collecting Charizards. That's the only thing I cared about. I had decided in my head that having a briefcase full of Charizards was the coolest way to have a collection, right? I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that feel like Charizard is the pinnacle of Pokemon cards, even though it's not even the rarest type of card. They are very commonplace. There's tons of different Charizard cards out there. There's so many, you pr probably can never keep up with all of them. Um, but you know, I've, I've pivoted in so many different directions. Um, I know that I went after my first edition collection, completing a master set first edition. And I remember when I got down to the last card, which was a first edition Charizard, the only card that I didn't have, and now I have two. But when I was going after that card, I remember losing auction after auction, after auction, after auction, 
People were turning me down for offers. I could not get that card to save my life. And when I finally got it, I realized that I had convinced myself that I absolutely needed to have this whole set completed because I am a completionist and I'm super OCD. But looking back, none of that stuff matters. None of it matters like what other people have. You know, I would see listings for a completed first edition set and I was like, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna complete a first edition set. And now I'm on this crazy, you know, wild goose hunt trying to complete every single Pokemon binder ever, every single set ever. And like, that's such a daunting task, right? I've been trying to complete the older sets, which I'm only talking like up to 2007. And I have so many cards that I still don't have from those generations. I have such a long way to go. Um, I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about the newer sets too. Like there's, and now these sets have 200 cards in them. So I'm like, I'm like, am I really ever going to be able to complete going after every single sword and shield set? You know, and I've, I've pulled all these cards and now I'm trying to binder them. And it's just a mess. I'm trying to organize everything. It's, it's overwhelming. It's seriously like when you get to a point where collecting gets overwhelming, you need to take a step back and think about like, why did you get into this in the first place? And what's the thing that is going to give you your peace? And um, for me, you know, I'm still going to go after consoles. I'm still going to go after, you know, cards that I'm, I'm looking for. It's going to evolve and it's going to grow because I have that, I have that, that completionism, you know, characteristic about me to a fault. I have to complete things. Um, but one thing I always do is I always go back to that one thing that makes me happier than anything else. And that's what makes a good collection. That's what this whole video, everything has been culminating to getting to that point. You know, I see people with, you know, sealed Pokemon game collections that are worth, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I go, you know what? I don't need to have that. I can have a couple open games and that can be it. You know, I don't have to go crazy. I probably will go crazy because that's just in my nature, but I'm getting really good at dialing it back and trying to zone in on the thing that makes me happiest. And for me, that's my theme decks. Collecting theme decks is just one of my favorite things to do. And whenever I get one in, I'm always happy with it. I've never, like, I rarely ever get a theme deck and look at it and go, this was a terrible purchase. And like, to some people, it might not be a good purchase because in theory, you're getting one hollow card. You're getting like 15, 20, 25 other random kind of worthless Pokemon cards and you're getting some energies. To a lot of people, that's not value. But to me, it's it's irrelevant. It's having the complete deck, having the counters, having the pamphlets, having everything complete and nice and having a box in good condition, being able to open it up and play with these cards and have a functionality for it. You can look at a nice card all you want, but if you can't play with it, you can't actually use it or enjoy it, that kind of sucks, honestly. With these decks, you can even use a bunch of other cards from the certain sets, and you can toss them into the decks, and you can play with them. I think the playability of these is probably one of my favorite parts. It's just super simple, easy to play, and I can't wait to kind of, you know, one day when my daughter is maybe potentially interested in this stuff, I can play Pokemon cards with my daughter. I can play really simple Pokemon cards with my daughter, and that I'm very excited about. Um, but, uh, you know, I will say these sealed theme decks, you know, you have a potential of getting a PSA 10 in those theme decks, you know, because the cards are mint condition, brand new. So there is some serious investment value there as far as that's concerned. But I think it just goes with anything. Having a sealed product is really special and history repeats itself, right? So if, if you're keeping all of your modern products sealed, even if they're not even worth that much, what we've seen in the last 20 years, it's like almost every single product ever, ever. Like if it's sealed, it's going to be worth something down the road. Now, these days we have, we have a flooding of products. We have so much stuff coming out that is overwhelming. It's really hard to pinpoint or say what products are going to do better than others or do really well. Um, I'm going to leave you guys with this is one of my last points that the, um, Pokemon booster boxes, I think, are the best way to go. I think the Pokemon booster boxes are a safe bet. If you keep them sealed, it's kind of the staple 
of Pokemon card investing as far as like anybody can come in. You don't have to be an expert. You can buy sealed booster boxes of the sets coming out uh, and that'll be great. Unfortunately, Scarlet and Violet is raising the MSRP of those prices. Well, no, Pokemon is raising the price on, on their new Scarlet and Violet set. And I'm kind of worried about that. I bought into Scarlet and Violet. I bought four cases um, and a spare booster box, but I don't necessarily feel great about it. I feel like I've spent more money than I've ever spent on modern cards. And it's definitely making me reflect and look back. Like, is this gonna be a good idea? I'm sure it will work out in the end as an investment, but does it make me happy? Do I think that having four cases is a good collection? For me personally, no. I think that having variety and having diversification, like that is a cool collection, a good collection to me. Um, but back to back to my point that I'm trying to reiterate over and over again, um, it's about what you like. And so let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you like, what brings you peace of mind. What's that thing that you can always go after? Um, I know everybody kind of has a niche. Everybody has a thing, but you know, be a trendsetter. Don't follow what everybody else is doing. Be a trendsetter. Buy the thing that you like and make sense of it and enjoy it because as long as you're happy, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Anyways, peace out, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I might have maybe should have talked up, uh, you know, touched up on some topics, but, you know, I'm it's super late. I'm super tired getting off my shift, um, but I really wanted to get this video out there and see what people thought and get those engaging interactions, those conversations started. Anyways, peace.